Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I got another Vegas Pro 17 tutorial for you. And in this one, I'm going to teach you how to get the best, almost perfect motion blur, specifically using Vegas only, no external plugins. But right before we get started, I do want to let you guys know I have separated the gaming from the tutorials from my channel and started a gaming channel called Scrapyard Plays. So if you want to check that out, if you enjoy watching games being played and whatnot, uh, go ahead and check out the link in the description below. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so before we jump into Vegas, I want to explain a little bit of the differences of what I've recorded and what we're going to be going over. So when you're recording a video with a DSLR, let's just say you have at least that. If you're recording a video and you want to make it look cinematic, you want to give it that cinematic motion blur. And that's done by setting your frame rate to right at 24 frames per second or 23.9 and then setting your shutter speed to double that, which usually is 50 or 48 if you can get it. And that gives you the most realistic cinematic looking motion blur. Now that's kind of just the rule of thumb whenever you set your shutter speed is to do it double your frame rate. And so if you're recording at 60 frames per second, then you want your shutter speed to be 120 or close to that. So when you slow it down, if you want to do slow motion, it'll have a perfect cinematic motion blur following it. Now, a lot of people don't necessarily have control over their shutter speed. So I recorded footage of me and 24 frames per second with a 50 shutter speed and then 24 frames a second with 240 shutter speed, which will reduce almost all the motion blur. So instead of you seeing kind of like the motion blur that you're seeing on my finger, it's going to be like gut, 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 every single frame. There's going to be almost no motion blur. And I did the same thing with the 60 frame per second footage. I recorded with 125 shutter speed on one of them. So you'll see some motion blur. And then I recorded with 250 shutter speed on the second one. So you see almost no motion blur, but it's really high frame rate footage. So let's jump right into it now that you know what we're doing. So inside Vegas, if you don't know, Vegas has a built in motion blur tool that you can use and you can load it up at the bottom here by holding control shift and pressing B. And that got rid of it for me. But if you hold control shift B, it brings it up. And in here you have a couple options. If you right click on the timeline, then you go to insert, remove envelope. You can see mute fade to color. Then you have motion blur amount and video super sampling. These two in conjunction make up the motion blur. So I'm going to show you some footage right here of this 60 frames per second footage. We're going to start with that. And this is just text. So I found that the numbers do differ a little bit if you're adding motion blur to live video to try to make that look as natural as possible. And then if you're adding motion blur to text to make text look as natural as possible. So we're going to start with the 60 frames per second motion blur text. We play it. You're going to see it's really, really smooth right here. So I'm going to pause it right here. So for what you're about to see here, I've added eight super sampling and I've added 0.04 motion blur. Now to do that, just to show you a brief example on it, if you right click and do the envelopes and make sure these two are checked, you'll see the bars down here and you can drag these up and down. The orange one is the super sampling. The highest it can go is eight or the lowest it can go is one. So for 60 frames per second, I've put that at eight. And then this pink bar down here, if you select it, that's your motion blur length. So you can bring it all the way up to 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 20, even all the way up to one whole second of motion blur, which nobody ever usually has it this high. As you can see, it doesn't look natural or good at all. So I'm just bringing these back down. So we're going to keep these at zero. And then I put in the values that I've used already in the text. So let's start that again. We have 60 frames per second with no motion blur and no super sampling. Now we have eight super sample. So that orange bar at the very, very top and 0 0.04 motion blur. And this is what it looks like. Looking pretty good. And then I changed it to, I kept the super sample at eight, but then I changed the motion blur to 0 0.063. And this is what this looks like. So you tell me what you think looks better. You can play that back as many times as you want. But yeah, that is for text. That is the best motion blur I have found for 60 frames per second text. Now, when we move to video over here, you see me and this is just regular 60 frames per second, 125 shutter speed, me doing some movements. And if I pause it, you'll see a little bit of motion blur in my hands. But you'll see they're kind of still framing, jumping around, you know, high frame rate footage. So then I change it to 250 shutter speed and you're going to see much less motion blur, almost none. So if I do it in super slow motion, you see almost no motion blur 
It's extremely fluid high frame rate. And so now this is the two best ways that I think look the best that I've been messing with this for a while uh, to give 60 frames per second the most realistic motion blur to match the double shutter speed number. So if we do zero motion blur, that pink line all the way to the bottom, and we do four super sampling, this is what this looks like. And we pause it. You're gonna see some motion blur around my hands. It's kind of a little bit more wider than the initial shot, than the initial motion blur itself, but it's still looking pretty good if I do it in super slow motion. So then I change the value again, and I change it to 0.04 motion blur, and then drop it down to two super sampling, and this is what it looks like. So you see motion blur, not too much, because there wasn't much to begin with when you double the shutter speed, but it looks pretty good. So those are the two options I've found. So again, if you want, go back in the video and you can match those numbers how I have it right there. And now let's jump to the 24 frames per second one. This one is a little bit different than the 60 frames per second, so I'm gonna go over the values again. So here is some text that's moving around the screen, and it is no motion blur, no super sampling, 24 frames per second text. And then I change it to 0 0.04 motion blur, and then I give it eight super sampling. So this is what it looks like. And if I pause it, or if I go super slow motion, you'll see that it has a good amount of blur and frames trailing behind it, and it looks pretty good. So then the third value is 0 0.063 motion blur and eight super sampling. So let's see what this looks like. It looks a lot more blurry, but it still looks pretty good to me. So if I go back and I pause it, you can see there's a lot of motion blur and a lot of trailing for right here, but that's given that blurry look. So this is what it looks like on top of footage in real life. If you were to add it into a video game or your own footage that you've recorded. So we have the no motion blur, no, no super sampling. And then we have the 0 0.04 motion blur and the eight super sampling. And then we have the 0 0.063 motion blur and the eight super sampling. So again, go back in the footage, rewatch those, and then see which one you like the most. I'm just giving you multiple options to use because, you know, everybody can say, oh, I found the perfect one, but it's more or less what your eye thinks is the best too. So that's why I give you multiple different avenues to go down. So now we're gonna see what it looks like on real footage. This is me shot 24 frames per second with a 50 shutter speed. So this is that cinematic motion blur look. If I pause it, you'll see I got plenty of motion blur all around me if I go in slow motion. And then this is 24 frames per second with 240 shutter speeds. So we're going to see a lot less motion blur. It's still shot in 24 frames per second, but if I go in slow motion, you're going to see very, very little blur, almost no blur trails following me because the shutter speed is so high. So then now I did, I added 0 0.063 motion blur and two super sampling. So let's see what this looks like. And this is of course added on the high shutter speed footage, but it looks pretty good. You see a lot of motion blur going with it. You see it's a little bit, it's a little bit trailing pretty far right here. So it, it looks pretty good. And then we have zero motion blur, but two super sampling. So if I go in slow motion, you're gonna see a little bit of trailing here but it looks a little bit still, you know, almost not realistic at that point. But those are the options you can go through. Go back inside the video and you can adjust the super sampling and the motion blur to however you see fit. I just wanted to give you guys the example of the rundown because I've been doing some tests with this and you can't unfortunately make it look perfect. There are third party plugins you could purchase kind of like real smart motion blur. They do a really good job that even in movies use, movie companies have used it. But if that's something you're into, Go check that out. I'll put it in the description below. Real smart motion blur, great plugin. But that's gonna wrap it up with this video. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys again the rundown of motion blur. Uh, if you are a patron, then you can download all my project files for this one specifically, and so you don't have to do it yourself uh, because sometimes these numbers are really hard to get to. If you hold control and drag them up and down, you can get a little more accurate. But again, you know, 
patrons get all my projects, the cool ones and stuff like that. So if you're considering becoming a patron, it's only a dollar and you can get a ton of perks. It's better than YouTube joins. It's better than Twitch subscriptions and it's better than Mixer subscriptions. You get a lot of benefits that I give you. You get to enter personal raffles. There's just so much about becoming a patron and you can do that in the description below. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and hope you learned something. Uh, if you can, maybe shoot that like button down there, over there. If you wanted also, you can subscribe. I have plenty other Vegas 17 tutorials on my channel. But other than that, that's going to wrap it up. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. And I'd like to give a special shout out to my super patrons, HPL Gamers and LMC.